So this right here, this is Windows 10 running on hardware, and no, it's not because this is becoming a Windows 10 channel. Far from it. The reason I'm on here is because of this little guy right here. So this is the Unity game engine. This is a very specific older version of the LTS release. This version is available on Linux, but the app's going to be deployed on Windows, and it's a VR app, which is a complete mess on Linux. And honestly, it was just going to be easier to do it on Windows, so I went out, bought a second drive, stuck Windows on it, and it's been okay, I guess. Now, what I wanted to talk about was, I guess, my experience relearning Windows and and just some of the annoying things about using it that I forgot about once I started using Linux. Now, it's not to say everything's bad. We have some cool things like window snapping, which work well enough. So we can snap this over here and then like snap a window here. We can like switch between desktops. So it's not completely horrible. But there's just some things that I'm missing while I'm on here that I've just gotten really used to while I'm using Linux. And I really miss not having them here. So I'm going to switch back over to my Linux desktop, just so it's a bit easier to record. That's much better. I couldn't work out how to actually get my webcam into 16x9 on Windows. I don't know why. It's working fine over here, though. So the first point is less of a point about Windows and more of a point about floating window managers. So Windows uses a floating window manager. It's called DWM, which is amusing if you know what DWM is. But anyway, it uses a floating window manager. And I still think floating window managers are just a worse way to work. Now, you might think floating window managers are great. That's fine. You can go use them if you want to. I'm going to stick to my tiling ones, though, because on a floating window manager, I find it really difficult to arrange my windows. You always have them just, like, sort of overlapping each other, and you don't really get a good view of them. Yes, now Windows actually does have things like snapping, and you can snap to one side and then snap a window in the other. That's cool. I do like that those features are there. It does make it way, way easier to use. And now that Windows also has multiple desktops, they're not exactly the most convenient, but there are multiple desktops. That's also nice as well. The problem with those multiple desktops, though, is it's very, very finicky to move windows between them. There might be a key binding for them. I haven't actually worked it out, though. I don't think there's one, because the only way you can move between the desktops, from what I've seen, is doing Control, Super, and then left and right on the arrow keys, which is a little bit of annoying of a binding. I'd like to be able to do it with Super and, like, a number, but Super Number opens a thing on your status bar, so maybe, like, Control, Super Number? Not a binding by default. I think you can set it up, but out of the box, I don't think that's a thing you can do. The point I was getting at, though, was I'm not really sure how to move windows between the desktops without going through the GUI menu. I haven't managed to find a binding for it. So the way it would work is you click on the little icon in the status bar. That will bring up a big view where you can actually like select different windows. It's sort of like the control tab view, but a bit more like gritty. And from there, you can right click on one of the windows and then say, send it to this desktop, or send it to a new desktop. Whereas, on my Linux system, what I could do is I can just go, make a window here, and then just send it over there. And then I can just jump over to it. That's nice. That's how a tiling window manager is supposed to work. It is nice that Windows is getting some of those features. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's kind of like if you take any floating window manager out there, it doesn't matter what it is, if you take a floating window manager and then just start bolting tiling features onto it. Yes, it might get a little bit better, but the exact same problem would happen if you do it in reverse. You take a tiling window manager like BSPWM, and then you just start bolting floating features on it. Some of them work fine. If all you want is a basic floating window, that works fine in BSPWM. But if you want proper floating features, you have to go use a floating window manager. And the same is true here. If you want those proper tiling features, you have to use a tiling window manager. And Windows DWM just isn't that. So the next point is about the package manager, or lack thereof. So I know when I used to use Windows really extensively, I installed Chocolatey. And Chocolatey is great, especially if you want to install just open source software. I love Chocolatey. It is, I would say, a massive improvement upon using Windows. But... Right now, there's not really a package manager for Windows. Now, I did do a video on one that is coming out soon, or I guess it is out now, but it's still very limited. In that video, I talked about how you can't do things like upgrade and uninstall software. So at that point, I don't really think there's a purpose to using the package manager. If you can't uninstall software and you can't update it, you've kind of stripped out a lot of the usefulness the package manager gives you. 
Another thing is because I use a tiling window manager, I am very, very dependent on my key binding. So I don't know how often it happens that I'll try to do something like full screen a window and I'll press super F or I'll try to bring up an app launch and I'll press super D or I will try to go to a different desktop and I'll press super two. These key bindings have been completely ingrained into me at this point and going to something that doesn't have them it just feels weird. Now I know there are some equivalent key bindings on Windows, I talked about those a little bit earlier, but not having my key bindings is a little bit weird. There's probably ways you can fix them, I don't know if there are ways natively in Windows. I think you have to do some like weird hacks to get them working, which is just an annoying thing about doing Windows. Even on the most closed down desktop environments on Linux, there's still so much that you can customise, even if it's just like key bindings. Every desktop environment gives you the ability to customize your key bindings and some of them will even just provide a simple interface to do it. Windows though, you kind of have to accept what Microsoft tells you is a good key binding, which I find a little bit annoying. You can get it working with like auto hotkey and stuff like that, but that's really too much work for what I want to do. I just want to easily be able to set up my nice key bindings and just get to work. I don't want to have to fiddle around with auto hotkey and things like that. I just want to get some real work done. Now, I don't think I've ever actually touched the start menu on Windows after I got all of my software set up. Because the way I, I've been doing it is I will put all of my software on my desktop and I'll put it in like the status bar. Because I don't want to touch the start menu. The last time I used the start menu on Windows 10, it didn't work. No, sorry, I've used it twice. One to bring up the control panel and it tried to bring up a web search. And another time, I think I was trying to bring up like um, snipping tool. That actually worked. I started typing in screenshot and it brought up snipping tool. It is nice when the Windows 10 search works. It feels like it might have gotten better than it was before because I remember when I used to use it, you would try to search for like a program on your system and it would be like, hey, do you want to do a Bing search? Like, no. No, I want to open up the program that I installed on my computer. Let me do that, thank you. It seems like it's better now. I don't know how good it is. As I said, I try not to use it. I've used it like two or three times. So for me, I just put everything in my taskbar because I don't use that much. I'm only using the system for Unity development. So I've got Steam for Steam VR. I've got Unity, obvious reasons. I've got Git for Git and Visual Studio because it doesn't matter. I just picked an editor. Anything else, don't need to touch. Back when I had Windows on this laptop that's off to the side here, Windows was unusably slow. Now, I think that's partially because of my laptop, but on this system right here, this system is relatively quick. It's got a 3600X and I can't remember what GPU I put in it, but Windows isn't unusably slow. Now, it will chug a bit when I'm doing some of my VR stuff. It's not complex VR stuff, so I think it might just be the fact that this project is written terribly. I wasn't the reason it was written terribly. It was written terribly when I got it. I just haven't bothered to fix it. So I don't know if that's a Windows problem with my GPU chugging or if it's a problem with the actual project. I suspect it's probably the project. Now, another thing I had happen, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how to do it again, but I had my Unity window just appear off the screen and there was no way to get it back. It was open and unlike say a tiling window manager, there was no way to like move it back. Now I know you can do things like try to maximize your window and that'll fix it. But what actually happened was I've got this right here. This is a VR headset. This is a Dell visor. It's kind of a terrible VR headset. Now what happened? I looked into my, uh, my system preferences and it showed there was four monitors there. Obviously one of the monitors was my uh, my second monitor, but then it had two others there. And it turns out the Dell visor, it has two lenses. Now what it was doing <laughs> was it was treating both of the lenses as monitors. And this is the Microsoft designed VR headset. They didn't design the VR headset to just not show up in Windows as a monitor. So it's plugged into your HDMI port, shows up as an extra two monitors, and it's designed by Microsoft. Why didn't you just design it to not show up as a monitor? I'm sure you could do that. You knew what you were doing. I don't know why it's like that. So I've had problems where sometimes windows will just appear on the VR headset, but obviously they can't really because the VR headset is 
having the like VR thingy projected onto the Steam VR thing. So you don't actually see them on there, but it still treats it as a monitor. I don't know why it happens. I don't know how to recreate it. It's just a weird issue. Now the other one is more VR stuff. So Windows VR completely breaks your input. So when you go into like the Windows VR thing, basically what it's gonna do is try to completely ignore your mouse input and your keyboard input and try to go over to like your, your VR controls, which is fine. But the problem is when I'm trying to do development and I'm trying to do VR stuff at the same time, there's no reason why my mouse should be trying to control stuff in VR when I have VR controls attached. If the VR controls are attached, do the VR controls for VR, do my keyboard and mouse input for my monitor. There's no reason that shouldn't work. I know Windows supports, I know Windows can support multiple keyboards at the same time. There's no reason why that shouldn't work. I don't know why it's like that. Once again, this headset was designed by Microsoft and they managed to break it somehow. I don't know how they've done it, but it's like that. Now, along with this, another thing about VR is that Windows doesn't know how to handle a VR headset. So even though those are being treated as like separate monitors, my main monitor would just flash black for no reason. So it just cuts out every so often, don't know why. It just frequently happens whenever I switch over to doing stuff in VR. It's fine when I'm just sitting around doing stuff like on my screen, but as soon as the headset goes out of sleep mode, it instantly starts trying to mess with my main monitor's input. Don't know why. There's no reason it should be doing that. It should just be doing stuff on the headset. So that's enough about VR stuff. Another thing is that you might have noticed if you go back to the start of the video, it showed that my time I think was 5.40 a.m. It's not actually 5.40 a.m. I would be in bed at that time. So it's actually 3.40 p.m. Now what happens, and I have no idea why this happens either, every time I switch drives, either my Linux install or my Windows install will have its connection to the NTP server disappear. So on Windows, every time I relaunch that system, it says it's some random other time because it forgets what GMT is. Sometimes the same thing will happen on Linux as well, where it'll just forget what GMT is and my time is completely wrong. It's not a difficult fix. I don't know why it's happening. I've never seen it ever happen. I've done dual boots before and it's never happened before. So there must be something weird going on with my setup. Now, my dual boot isn't dual boot done properly. What I've done is I've actually not got it working with Grub because I never bothered to get it working with Grub. So what I did is basically when I installed Windows, I unplugged my Linux drive and I just installed Windows on the drive. Then I replugged the drive back in and now to switch between them, I do it in my UEFI which might have something to do with my NTP server connection dying. I can't imagine it should, but it might have something to do with it. So basically whenever I want to switch, I just do it through the boot order of my UEFI. It works perfectly fine, except for the times when it doesn't. And Windows discovers that there's a Linux drive there and says, hey, that's not a, that's not a Windows bootloader. I'm going to try to kill it. It's tried to do that a couple of times actually, where I've tried to boot into Linux and then I just get stuck in a boot loop until eventually the Windows 10 recovery tool comes up. I don't want to use the Windows 10 recovery tool. Let me just boot into my Linux drive. For a while there, I was actually just unplugging the Windows drive when I didn't need it, just in case that was going to happen because don't try to boot loop it. Just go to the drive that I've set in my boot order. Don't try to take over Windows. I know that it's not a Windows bootloader. It's fine. It won't hurt anything. It's not a root kit. I want to boot off of that one, so just let me do it. I'll come back to you eventually. One other thing that happened, this actually wasn't on my list of things, but one other thing that happened as I was recording this video, so when I was switching over from Windows back to my Linux system, I got a Windows update. <laughs> I, I haven't had a Windows update until this point, and I forgot how annoying they were. It's just like, I want to just... Stop using this. Let me just shut down. If I want to update, I'll tell you to update. You don't need to automatically update. I honestly love having my package manager do my updates when I want them to do it. This is not just true for Arch Linux. This is true for every version of Linux. I can just do my updates when I want to. 
I don't need to wait like 10 minutes for my system to shut down just because you're trying to download and install updates. I can do them when I want to. If I want to leave for like three months, I can do that if I want to. It's not a good idea, don't do that. But I can if I want to. And it's not going to get in the way of my boot cycle. It's just going to happen when I tell it to happen. So, Windows Update, still annoying. I still hate it. It's still something I never want to deal with. Now, I don't want to end the video negatively. There are some things that do just work better on Windows. As much as some people don't want to admit it, there are just some things that do work better. For example, dual-headed output. If you're not using a desktop environment, doing multiple monitors is a pain because you have to get them working with something like XRender. Yes, once you have it working, it just works perfectly fine. But there is something to say about the value of something that just works out of the box. I don't need to do any configuration with Windows 10. If I want to plug in a second monitor, just plug it into my GPU and it works. That is nice. It, as I said, it's not too complicated to get set up. I've got it working perfectly fine in my Linux system without a desktop environment. It's just a little bit of extra work that maybe you don't want to do. Now the other thing is, I haven't had any hardware support issues while I'm on Linux, but there are certain pieces of hardware that are a bit finicky, especially certain Wi-Fi cards, especially cards that have Broadcom chips. So, in that case, Windows is better at that. Linux is pretty good with hardware support as well, but there are just some things that don't work as well, especially with super cutting edge hardware. So if you're going to be using something like the most state-of-the-art GPU, there may just not be Linux drivers for it just yet, especially if it's on the NVIDIA side. Now, AMD, it might be a bit better, but even then, there have been some problems in the past with top-of-the-line AMD GPUs for like the first month or two they've been out, but those issues tend to get resolved pretty quickly. And the other thing is printing. I have never managed to work out how to do printing on Linux, but when I go to Windows, it just finds the drivers magically and it just works. And when I want to print something, I don't want to have to think about getting all that set up. I just want it to work. So for that as well, Windows is just a little bit better. But I'm not switching over to Windows at any point. Those things aren't enough to sell me on using Windows. I really like all of the other nice stuff that Linux has, especially my install of Linux and everything that I've done to it. There's so much I've done to my system at this point that I just can't leave. And when I have to use anything else, it just feels like a step down. Now, if you try to use my system, you might think my system's a step down. But for me, I've gotten so used to it at this point, just building it up over time, that whenever I use anything else, it always just feels like a massive downgrade. So, I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this video. If you've used Windows recently and you have your own experience to say about it, or if you use Windows on a daily basis, let me know what you think about it down below. And I think I'm going to end it there. But before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Peter, Lee, Road, Tony, Donald, Q, Larry, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want to get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and also the audio version, which is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Also, this channel is available on BitTube and Library as well, so be sure to go check that out over there if you don't want to watch it on YouTube. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.